What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Super excited. Um, we've got our second Lady Angler podcast um, ever. So this is going to be uh, one for the books. We're super excited about it. Um, first off, if you didn't, you missed out. But we're, uh, we're trying to raise some support for the back end of this podcast through Patreon. Uh, it really helps us out um, with the time we invest in this and with um, the money that we've invested in this. And so um, we're going to, starting next week, uh, be uploading some like uh, content that's just for our Patreon subscribers, um, some different shows or some different podcasts, um, some videos and other stuff like that. And uh, But tonight we're going to do a giveaway. Um, I got my fancy cowboy hat here with some names <laughs> in it. Uh, we've got two Fenwick HMG rods. I'm going to let Cameron pull the first whoops, first name out of there. All right. I feel super cheesy to them. I hope I can read the name. You probably can't with my handwriting. Will Webb? Will Webb. You're the first. I believe that's a W. Yeah, that's a W. Webb. Will Webb wins one of the rods. Let's All see right. if we can pull another one out. I don't want to do too much time. Josh Westcott. So y'all are the two winners. If you're on here, um, you can just hit me up on uh, on social media and we'll, we'll get those rods shipped out to you. I hope both y'all live here because it's going to be nicer to just give them to you than ship them. I have um, one of those HMG rods. You got one of those? You like it? Yeah, and I take care of it like it's my baby. Nice. The new <laughs> HMG, the brand new one is sick. Super sick. Um, I, I've re I used to really like the HMGs and they got kind of crappy and now they're, mm -hmm. I like that model. Um, and the new ones are really awesome. But um, other thing... The fit private Facebook group um, for just kind of the you know building that community. Go check it out. It's Eastern Current Fishing, as well as um, the Eastern Current page we're, we're live streaming on right now. Um, share this broadcast real quick so uh, on your Facebook page so other people can check it out. But uh, that's enough. Any, anything you want to share? Do you have the coronavirus yet? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I, might, I might have it, but in don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you can't tell, we're sitting six feet apart. We are. It's it's a wide angle <laughs> camera, so or it's a short angle camera, so. It makes um, us look skinnier and six feet apart. I know it's it's uh, it's it's been tough, like trying to make the right call of like, do I guide or do I not guide? And you seem like you've been busy. I had so many cancellations, and then a bunch of people I think are just really restless from mm -hmm. um, the having to stay at home. But all right, enough of me and Cameron talking. Let's bring on our guest, 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 whatever you want to say, uh, Christina Weber. What's going on? Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you guys, I will say, I forgot to say this in the beginning, Spectrum Internet has been sucky. So if it does drop the, the live stream, we will finish recording and we'll put that up as a podcast and a video. But hopefully, fingers crossed um, that it doesn't. So, um, Christina, tell people where you're, uh, where you're coming in from. Uh, West Palm. West Palm, right on. Party Central. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. West Palm. It's like it Miami, like kind Miami. of. West Palm it's Beach. It's not like Miami. <laughs> <laughs> See, obviously, I don't know much about down there. Do but, not associate us. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't. I won't. Well, super cool. I, we kind of met through social media through our mutual friend, Hansen, who's been on the podcast. We talked Tarpon okay. last year. Um, I was just thinking about him today before we did this one. He And about the Savage savage Gear Pulse Tail Mullet that, that he fishes a bunch. I, I like made a big cart of them online and I was like I can't order these right now but I want to I'm not, I'm not making any money so um, but cool well tell people let's tell people or you tell people your story kind of how you got into fishing and, and where where this uh, this passion kind of came from I was born this way <laughs> like most um, of us like most of us I really do feel like it's one of those things that you're born with um, yeah. it's a really hard thing I think to teach people <laughs> but um, I really have fished forever. Um, my dad fished, and I started tournaments when I was 15, and they were all bass tournaments, and I just, I, I don't know, I just really loved it. I liked the competitive aspect of it as well. Like, I loved it so much. I just wanted more. I wanted to be better. I wanted to just have my hands in every which direction I could with it. So Yeah, for sure. That's where it started. So the bass tournaments that you were fishing when you were 15, were those boat tournaments or were they kind of bank-based fishing tournaments? or They were boat tournaments. So nice. like BASS actually has, they have now more tournaments for people like younger kids, like high schoolers and middle school and stuff like that. But they had just these like tiny like federation clubs for kids at yeah. the time. 
like the adults would basically donate their time and they would have a boat and you'd have two anglers on the boat and you would go fishing and have a tournament and you'd have a state championship and like all the things. It was really great. Yeah, that's super cool. And Florida has yeah. some of the best bass fishing around. Doesn't yeah. It? You're super close to Okeechobee, right? I actually grew up like 40 minutes from Belle Glade. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Some of the, uh, the bass fishing I see from down there, like Cameron Sand is just insane. And, so many lily pads. The best day of bass fishing I ever had was uh, putting in in Flamingo, though, and running oh. way up <laughs> through Whitewater and all the way up through, like, Tarpon Bay and fishing the very back of the Everglades up there. And really? It was a uh, – well, I probably shouldn't share too much. I think Hansen's one here. He might get mad about, about that. Sorry, Hansen. Um, That's the pin. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a pin. But it was, it was Hansen's spot that he sent us, um, and it was sick. I mean, it was, like, every freaking cast, like a three-pounder. But – um, enough he does of those gangster spots. <laughs> yeah, he's got the craziest spots. It was super cool. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but so uh, you've got, and I know you don't do much of this anymore, but let's talk a little bit about your kayak fishing history. So I know you were into tournaments, but I mean, just doing a little bit of research on you, I saw it, like a rooster fish from a kayak, sailfish, lots of crazy, crazy stuff. That's the, that's like how I got. So I was in this like weird phase where I was like, okay, like I need to buy a boat or something. I want to dial my fishing up more and not have to depend on other tournaments or other people. I couldn't pick a boat. I'm like, but I like to do everything. I don't know how I pick like one boat that's going to do all these things for me. Right. And I landed, somebody suggested a kayak and I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, it sounds slow. It sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I ended up, I was like, you know, forget it. I'm going to, I did it. That's what we did. I got, I got a kayak and you can literally do everything in the kayak. Everything. I have one boat that can truly do everything I want it to do. It has, it literally has zero limits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no that's limits. really cool. Um, so for me, it worked really, really well because I could, at any given moment, I could make a 12 mile drift offshore for sailfish if I wanted to. I could go I, I take it to another country. You could do, like, I didn't take necessarily, well, I did take my kayak to the Bahamas. I put it on the little ferry. Oh, nice. It got shipped over the Bahamas. <laughs> but with the Panama stuff with the rooster fish, um, that was a lodge okay. that, called Los Buzos. And they were wanting to implement kayak fishing there. And my friend had said to him, like, if you want to do this, you need to talk to this girl, Christina. And so just kind of flew down to Panama and just started like super grassroots, like just dumping it in the water and paddling around and figuring it out. That's um, sick. It was a lot of fun. It was the cool. It's by far the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Like it's, it's easily the cool fishing in Panama in general, but like literally just like getting a kayak and just launching from the beach and just here you are, <laughs> figure it out. It is a lot of fun. I really enjoy that. All I, on artificial. All on artificial. That's yeah. sweet. What? So I saw your sailfish on artificial or what did, what did he end up eating? Sailfish was live bait. Okay. Sorry. I called you out there. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I would get up at like two in the morning and launch to get catch my own goggle eye. Oh, too. that's super cool. That is super cool. <laughs> yeah. Just bridling goggle eye and kind of drifting out there. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Just, just the whole like typical Palm Beach way of sail fishing. Yeah. <laughs> What's a goggle eye? A goggle eye. You got to explain to this guy what a goggle eye is. It's a very fragile bait fish. <laughs> it's, <laughs> What's the, what, what, describe the shape of a goggle eye. Oh, in gosh. one word. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, round. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> like a little jack looking almost, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, they kind of are like, like jack. Like a little looking. small jack, but it's a bait yeah. fish. Yeah. Uh -huh. You catch uh, them with cat's net? You catch them at night. I've never caught them. How do you catch When you go out to target goggle eye, how do you, you catch them? You catch them with cat's nets. They're very, like, they're very weird. You do catch them at night. Um, yeah, they're very, like... They're very specific critters. Like there can you can actually have too much light on your boat, even really? like too much like light in general could affect you catching goggle eye. Yes, and I thought that was baloney. I was like, this is a load of crap. Like that's silliness to me. Like they're I'm fishing on the bottom for them. Like how do they see light? 
Yeah, that's um, nuts. Because that's yeah, that's all I would do. I would kind of just you just mark them and you sabiki. Well, I just yeah, I sabiki. sabiki. I think that's what most people do what they do. Um, you just sabiki for them, you catch them. But um, but yeah, like I learned when I was learning to catch goggle eyes in the Bahamas. That's when I realized that the light is it affects them a lot. I had to go oh. like ghost mode. <laughs> that can be scary too, like out in the ocean in your kayak at two o'clock in the yeah, morning yeah. trying to catch goggle eyes. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, those tournaments were super intense. I'd get up at midnight. I'd go catch, try to catch goggle eye for a few hours. Try to maybe get a nap before you start fishing the tournament. If you even are successful catching the goggle eye, <laughs> sometimes I'm like coming back to the beach and like everybody else is waking up to come down and launch, and I've been up fishing for three hours already. <laughs> oh my gosh! There should, you should just start a goggle eye tournament. It's dedication. <laughs> a nighttime goggle eye tournament. Wait, yeah, can, so can you? I don't. Can you talk a little bit about um, taking a kayak 12 miles offshore? Because that sounds like something I would be absolutely terrified to do. <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily take it 12 miles offshore. I would do these 12-mile drifts in the Gulf Stream, basically. Gotcha. You, and it, which would end up pushing me. I would end up being like five to six miles offshore by the time I was done. Um, but it's still a long day. It's a yeah. long day. And, the, and most kayaks have like the pedals right so you, well, you can propel so yourself I like, yeah i had like the most badass kayaks imaginable i had the foot pedal ones that's the that's the way to do it anybody out there yeah i would it. imagine because you're what's your buddy's name the, elias elias, elias. Mm -hmm. one of judd's buddies goes out like two or three miles yeah he'll pedal kayak. drive out there and, and i can imagine too like using the pedal or the paddle as well would be a benefit you know when you're moving coming back in and not fishing you can paddle and does paddle. he have like a gps and yeah gps and fish finder and all everything. that stuff yeah it's crazy it's, it's nice to have all the things if you can even just something small just if you do plan on just so you can mark things track yourself yeah definitely figure yeah. out how far you've been where you're moving yeah Sometimes, you don't have to it's nothing serious but just the little things sometimes i feel like people that fish on kayaks a lot are sometimes more successful at catching fish than people on boats i'd agree just because they're like i'm here I'm, yeah i know that there's probably fish around i'm gonna fish this area really hard yeah because definitely. i don't feel like pedaling three more miles definitely. to the next spot and they end up you know fishing it until they catch something whereas if you're in a boat you throw a few casts out oh, there's nothing here move yeah oh, <laughs> throw a few casts out oh, there's nothing here move. i mean i've spent all yeah. whole days just running around from too. spot to next spot thing you know spot. four hours gone yeah next time you're like uh still haven't caught fish yet and we've been out here for five hours <laughs> yeah that is i would have to agree with you i've made so many new bad habits when i got a boat i was just like roll into somewhere, make a few casts, look around, see nothing and leave. But in the kayak, it, exactly, you have to, you're committed. You got to figure it out. Yeah. Your prep work, that's what I tell everybody, your prep work on land is crucial to your success when you get in the water. Yeah. In kayaking. It's in that way in fishing in general, I think, but kayaking very specifically, it makes you like do, you learn a lot of skills on land with fishing <laughs> research mm -hmm. i agree i think too like if you can have a kayak mindset yeah in a new area on a boat like if you go in there and you're like all right forget that i have this motor like i'm gonna yeah. stick to this area and learn it whether i catch fish or not i'm gonna understand you know when the fish are here where they're gonna be i think that could be huge unless you live in north yeah. ghana and sometimes there's just places that look sick that don't have fish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i yeah. think that's <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm sure kayak fishing probably teaches you, especially if you go from like a kayak to boat, to really kind of fish slow. Yeah. And like spend your time in an area and really look. Um, one thing that uh, I learned big time a couple of years ago fishing with Alan Kane in Louisiana was like how much time he spent in like one area. They were like, we were pulling around and he, he was pulling slow and I was like, I don't think there's any fish in here. And he's like, y'all probably noticed that I'm, I'm a little bit slower <laughs> pulling around, but like, I just like to work areas really hard. Yeah. And it paid off like in massively. So I think that's a good transition um, into kind of talking about your change from really kayak fishing into getting a boat and, and learning how to fish from a boat. I mean, even little changes in fishing 
can be so tough. Like I remember when I was in college and, and high school and before I really started guiding, I never really bait fished. Like I went out and, art- mm-hmm. and fished with the artificial, you know, almost 90% of the time, uh, probably more than that. And then when I started to realize, all right, you know, some days, some clients, I'm going to be bait fishing. Like I sucked at bait fishing. I sucked at catching yeah. redfish on bait. When it was like the easy, like you think, oh, bait, I, I can definitely like get on bait. Yeah, yeah. yeah no so problem. little changes can, can be tough, but they can really help you learn overall. So let's talk about that transition for you from like kayak to, to vessel, if you will. Uh, and uh, like, just take it yeah. away. Enlighten us. It was a big, <laughs> it was a big change for sure. I'm, I fish very, very slow. And I think that even naturally in the boat, just the way the boat drifts in water, like it just drifts faster. Yeah. So I feel like it was a huge, it, it shouldn't have been such a huge transition, but it, it really is. Like even the way I cast, I have been sitting down casting for five years yeah. and all of a sudden I'm like standing <laughs> and I would do these weird maneuvers and people are like, why are you casting like that? <laughs> like, I don't know. I think it's just from like sitting down. <laughs> You're like winding up. And sitting up. <laughs> the lasso. Throw. Yeah. Happy Gilmore cast. Yes, yes. I, it was very weird. And I, all of my, like, I have all of my rods, all of my tackle, everything has been built based on kayak fishing. Like, yeah. every, everything is tailored to be the best it can be for that kind of fishing. So it's been an adjustment. Um, I'm really loving it, though, because I still, at, like, who I am, my fishing style is very slow. Okay. I'm very slow. It takes me a long time to work an area. I like to assess everything. I like to just sit there and stare for like 15 minutes if I have an option to do <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't like to miss anything because that little tiny thing you miss because you're doing farting around looking at something, yeah. it uh, can make or break your day. So um, it was, it's been an adjustment. I do fish a little faster. I do want to move around more, um, but I still – I still am me and I still fish the way I fish. Um, I don't feel like I've changed a lot of things. I still fish only artificial. I don't do any fly fishing yet. Um, don't do it. It's such a freaking waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> this, well, this is why kind of why I haven't done it yet because I was like doing freshwater tournaments, inshore tor- tournaments, offshore tournaments. And I was like, I don't need to add <laughs> another thing yeah. fly fishing to this. Um, I'll get there when I get there. For sure. Uh, but yeah, it's, that's, I mean, I still do the same thing. So it, it's, it's been an adjustment a yeah, little bit. Definitely. Um, do you still have a kayak? Do you still kayak fish at all? No, but I will. Yeah. I was going to say, you're going to get, if you've kayak fish that much, it's, it's too, you know, bred into who you are. You're going to have to get one. It is. I already wish I had one. I only, I just got, I just got rid of everything in order to buy a boat. Yeah. And it was like, in my mind, I was like, it's all or nothing right yeah, now. For sure. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. My buddy who I kayak, who I fish with sometimes, I went kayak fishing with him the other day. But he, he makes his whole living YouTube kayak fishing. His name's Elias. And one, my back freaking killed me after day of kayak fishing. Like, I didn't hurt in the boat, but as soon as I stood up, I was, like, in so much pain. But the other thing is he wants, like, you might be like this. He's, he, like, wants to get a boat, but just so that he can take his kayak further offshore. <laughs> like, he wants a boat. He can put his kayak in, take the boat out, run off, anchor it up, and then get back in his kayak and fish. I, like, I, I must, I'm, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already, like, I find these areas, and I'm like, oh, if I had a kayak right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that the, the versatility and the lightweightness, like, especially shallow water fishing, like, like you're – you do a lot of and flats fishing like being able to get into an area like a lot of the stuff we fish this time of year um at certain tides like at low tide you can't get in and out of that area like you have to either stay out of it or go in there and stay in there until the tide changes but if you had a kayak you could drag across sandbars um you know you'd have a lot more access throughout the tide but then the only the only downfall to me of a kayak is you know reach like how far can i travel in that kayak to hit a fishing spot and then access but apart from those two things you know it's Mm -hmm. they're hard to beat they really are once you're once you're fishing in the area you want to be in i don't think there's a better better option it's it's very it's it's perfect yeah all you need is the the skiff mothership yeah (laughs) the skiff mothership so let's let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now and you you've been you were telling me uh, running stone crab pots 
for the past three years. So go into that and kind of how that's born this uh, or or birthed this uh, love for triple tail fishing. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like the area like I have traps in is in like Fort Pierce. Okay. And we're n it's not like an area like west coast of Florida is like notorious for triple tail or like the Everglades. Um, we don't have like we have like these offshore triple tail. Um, and then we we used to get like this run of them in like our rivers and stuff, but we yeah. don't really I don't I never really fish for them. I just heard of people and I like no one seems to be catching them anymore these last few years. So because of the, the, the crab traps in the water, I've been able to fish for them more and I get, it's really exciting. Um, yeah. I don't really know a whole lot about it. Like unless they're sitting on the pot, I don't know where else to find them. I don't know really, you know, when they leave, if I can find them somewhere else, if we have resident ones, I don't really know a whole lot about it. So I'm kind of still learning, but, um, it's been pulling the stone crab traps has been really fun. You get best of both worlds. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Get stone crabs in. The stone crabs are so delicious. The stone I, crab yeah, like, triple tail meal sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> that sounds like five star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It's so much it's so much fun. Like, especially from like for me, like fishing is so serious all the time. Um mm. it's like tournament mode all the time. Pulling the traps really helped me like slow down and just have a nice day on the water and still be fishing because when you put traps in the water, you're still fishing. You still have to like act in with an animal and like hunt for them. Yeah, so for sure. Cool. Yeah. If you set your trap in an area without stone crabs, you're not going to yeah. catch any stone crabs. <laughs> or yeah. is it the same, um, in Florida as it is in North Carolina where you can only keep, you can only keep one claw, right? That's, yeah. That's what crab. it is here. Oh, no, we're allowed to keep both claws in Florida. Oh, you are? Cool. Yep. Y'all sinners, yeah. a bunch of sinners down there. I don't I'm know. Just kidding. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I always, I, there would be times where sometimes I wouldn't take both um, because I didn't really like it. And then I, so I did research on it to try to understand. I'm like, well, am I missing out on some? Should I keep them both? They actually have better re, well, this is what Google says. <laughs> Google, better, Google smart. Google smart. They Google have better knows re everything. <laughs> They have better regrowth if they don't have both of their claws because they're forced to eat the grass. So they're forced to get better nutrients. However, we don't have a whole lot of grass happening in Florida right now. That's true. Yeah, yeah with your water quality. Yeah. So it's getting better in areas, but it's also still not very good. So I don't know. It's hit or miss. For sure. Um, here, here's, a, here's a question for you. Well, you were talking about the, the triple tail um, and not knowing where they're going that I feel like that's how I, I am here. It's like, if I see them awesome, yeah. they're here. And it seems like, you know, there's times a year where they're pulsing through, but if I don't just see one free swimming, like there's no, no reason like the triple tail, I've never had a spot where it's like the triple tail are appearing at this oyster yeah. bar at this like tide each day. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. That's the frustrating thing about them. But yeah. they, I think they in large areas, like, you know, the Cape off of the Everglades or, yeah. um, you know, the off of Jupiter Inlet. I don't even know if that's a triple tail spot, but like it, it, like just different zones that they kind of move in through, mm -hmm. um, or they're just, they're cool fish. I really like fishing for them, um, they're so cool. and sight fishing for them. And, and you see them and like, if you're running fast, it always is like, that might've been a triple tail and you and turn they, around and it's they always like, look like pieces of trash. Yeah. They look just like pieces of trash. Yeah. They do. And we, that's kind of the, like the skills I'm trying to like teach myself. I'm trying to teach myself the things I have access to, like visually deciphering them and knowing when they're different colors, if they're willing to feed or if they're not feeding. So yeah. those are the things I've kind of been able to tweak recently where I'm like, I have the confidence to like drive by a trap and if he's a certain color, like I know we can catch this fish. Yeah, definitely. Really? That's yeah. What, how does the color affect how aggressive they are i think that they're just like they're just lit up like they're just they're like in they're that yellowish color yeah, they're kind of yellowish and yeah at, at least for me <laughs> that's how it's worked um if they're kind of like dark um it doesn't seem like they're really feeding or really want to be feeding or they're not very aggressive at least yeah. um they're just more aggressive when they're all lit up and ready to ready to charge that's that's true. Uh, that's huge. I think is is reading that fish in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never thought about that. Yeah, 
That's cool. That's I, all I, well, I do a lot of hot laps. Yeah. <laughs> all I do is drive around and look at them. Yeah, for sure. How many pots do you run? Um, it's five per person and we have 20. Nice. That's awesome. So you, have is it an area where there's a lot of other stone crab pots in there too? It's actually got a ton of them. Yeah, wow. there's pots everywhere. You could you could just run pots all day if you wanted to, really. That's you just cool. do laps. Yeah. yeah. Do you see any other fish getting up where those stone crabs are? Like I know, um, you know, in some areas down there, y'all get cobia on the flats and stuff in some of the same areas you. We haven't, not in my area. Okay. Um, I know that there's a lot of the, more so West Coast, I feel like they get, a, or not even just West Coast, I guess, maybe like the Everglades and stuff, um, just in general, get more Kobe on the flats. Not anywhere I've been. I bet they would come, I bet they would come to Fort Pierce. Okay. But I've never seen them. I bet they've done it though. Yeah. It's an area I think that would provide that what environment. Yeah, and they're there, right? They're they're right, just right outside the inlet. So I figured, if something weird happens, they kind of get turned around and come in. I bet they would. Definitely. Um, but I don't see any other fish on them. Really? Anything else? Nothing. I was. One thing that I found interesting this past year is I talked to a crabber in, our, in one of our river systems, and I always ask him. It seems like a week late. I'm like, have you seen? <laughs> And he triple toe in your pots. And he's like, oh my gosh, man, I wish you'd asked last week. They were on every pot. But the past couple of days, I haven't seen any. Um, but I asked him at the right time. And he was like, yeah, there's a bunch of triple toe on the pots. I wasn't able to go, but I told my buddy. So my buddy went and he he was on a, he, the same guy that was kayak fishing. And he took, and this is dirty water. So you can't really see, unless they're right on the buoy, you couldn't mm -hmm. see the triple toe. He took live shrimp on floats, went and threw them at all these different buoys. And he was getting sheep's head. On off the crab pots, just blind casting shrimp to these crab pots, catching sheep's head off of them, yeah. which is cool. And I, I never thought that would happen. I bet there's sheep's head. I do see guys fishing for sheep's head around. I, I bet they're on there. I just don't fish that way. Yeah. So I don't think I would have a tendency to actually accidentally catch them. Definitely. Um, I do see the guys more so like on the like pilings and stuff fishing for sheep's head sheep's head cool so i bet they'd be i bet they'd be on the i catch them in the trap sometimes i'll get sheep's head so oh, will you I yeah they'll get in there little ones we have a question here from tommy mungo he said what does christina use for bait triple tail live or artificial and, and you were saying you just use artificial but what do you like to throw artificial wise hansen makes me little shrimp jigs oh and nice <laughs> That's awesome. Those, uh, those, his jigs are sweet. I've caught some bone fish with, and some uh, um, stuff tied on too. Like, um, you could just use DOA shrimp though too. Yeah. So I think that for me is always a good go-to. Tell people kind of break down Hansen's uh, jig for for people listening. I wish I had one. It's he uses those. Um, I think it's the bu bugs. Yeah, bugs. bugs. Mm -hmm. Jig heads. He uses. They're like an arrow. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, and he, I don't even know how he makes them, but they're super sweet. They look just like little shrimps. They got little eyes and little thing. I don't know. Hey, little, <laughs> he makes everything for me that doesn't have any feathers because I hate feathers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably bunny. Probably isn't some probably bunny. bunny. Yeah. So that, no. that, there you go. I don't, yeah. I wish I had. Dang it. I should have brought it. Oh, that's all good. We actually had, if you want to know what some of the bug stuff looks like, go check out. We did an episode with that guy, with um, Heath Hipple. Have um, you, you used some of his Yeah, jigs, I right? used some of his jigs, and, and they, were, they weren't they were the shrimp jigs. It was more of like, I'd say, like a crab-colored jig, but it worked really well for redfish. That's he cool. makes um, cool stuff. He makes like super it. cool stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. just different, man. For it's pressure different. fish, just showing them something a little bit different mm -hmm. um, can sometimes really, really be helpful. Agreed. We have one more question to yep. we? open the comments. Let's see here. Um, sketchiest day, Michael Huck said, sketchiest day offshore, weather, critters, <laughs> etc. <laughs> <laughs> weather oh critters. God. In a kayak, I believe. That's what he said. I was just talking about this the other day. <laughs> I had a tournament I fished um, a few years ago. I actually got gaffed in the hand right here. Oh my gosh. On that day. Um, yeah, it was pretty intense. It was the scariest day I've ever had offshore. Like I truly had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and I was like, I might not go home today. Like today might be the day I don't go home. And I have some GoPro footage of it and it's 
like if you know me, it's like you almost don't enjoy watching it because you can almost see that like I'm just hanging in for dear life. <laughs> the terror. We were, yeah, it was fishing. It was one of the extreme kayak tournaments. Um, they we were sail fishing outside of uh, Hillsboro or no, was it Hillsboro? Hillsboro in it maybe? Um, I can't remember now. But either way, huge storm came out of nowhere. You could not see anything in front of you, and we're all outside of an inlet. And I'm thinking, if a boat is running into the inlet, he's not going to see me. And I, you couldn't even go near shore. I had to literally just put my nose into it and just paddle and just wait for it to pass for hours. Hours. Golly. Was it yeah. lightning? I don't remember if there was lightning or not. Um, Probably because you got struck in the head by it. <laughs> <laughs> it really very, very scary. I did not enjoy it. There's a lot of people that flipped. It was a very scary day for everyone. Um, anyone who fished that tournament in the kayak will remember it for the rest of their life. <laughs> wow. Um, it was just really intense. It just wasn't fun. You just were trying. All I was trying to do was just stay alive, really. So Hansen, Hansen just responded. And I, y'all are crazy for that, for the, the kayak fishing in the ocean when it's that gnarly. I mean, granted, I had my flat skiff like almost seven miles offshore two days ago, and that was a little sketch. It was super nice, but uh, not quite as crazy as a kayak. So Hansen said EP, tarantula brush, and fox fur is what he ties your jigs out of. Thanks, so, For sure. So, all right, John Ferris, does that name ring a bell? Yes. So he just I said, my know. last time fishing with Christina, this girl was running the skiff wide open and flipped. I don't think he means like flip the boat over, but like whip the boat around real quick. One cast, triple tail on, that triple tail hooked up that he had never never saw it. <laughs> so, and he said, hashtag good eyes. <laughs> so, Sometimes you only get one chance and you got a perfect cast. For sure. <laughs> I would, uh, you got to get that, that cast down where you, you can keep the boat on plane, throw back, keep the bail open, just know when the fish ain't, flip it. It's good. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Try to catch one while you're still on plane. See if you can do that. <laughs> yeah, see if you can rip his lips off. <laughs> it just comes skipping up the water behind the boat. Uh, you need to use like a, like a pretty heavy, probably like a popping or jigging sure. rod or something like that for that. But, uh, so, I don't know. I'm going to try you... though. Hanson just said, Christina and I chased water spouts once. That sounds very romantic. <laughs> I have, oh, I have all those, actually, I have all of those videos on my highlights on my Instagram page. Oh, sweet. Because it was really one of the coolest things I've ever done. That's super cool. I'm hoping y'all weren't in a kayak when y'all were doing that. No. Okay. We were in Hanson's fancy boat. <laughs> <laughs> fancy Maverick. You've it's chased okay. water spouts before, haven't you? Yeah, I've chased waterfalls too. Oh, was well, it romantic? Don't go chasing was it romantic for oh, no. you as well? <laughs> um, it was romantic, yeah. The I best <laughs> the best um, water spout story, though, ever was when I was a kid, me and my dad and a buddy and his dad ran offshore fishing here. And it was a day where there was like some eerie weather inside, but nothing too bad. And then we started seeing some water spouts offshore, but, you know, far enough away. Everything was fine. And then there was like... The, the storm blew in and we had to run south and come in through, we came in through the, we ran across the shoals and came up the Cape Fear River. And no, no, no. I think we ran into Carolina Beach Inlet. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly where we were, but there was a, like five water spouts off Carolina Beach and there was a news reporter on the beach talking about the water spouts <laughs> and they're like, and some idiots out there on their boat running around <laughs> the water spouts and my mom was watching the news freaked out because she hadn't heard from us and she's like, that's their boat. They're they ripping through these water spouts. Which is pretty crazy. Um, That's awesome. It is. It's a. Uh, it's a good memory for sure. But um, yep. so let's talk a little bit about. So what other types of fishing do you do in your area besides triple tail? Do you do any redfish, snook, tarp, anything like yeah. that? Yeah, I do redfish um, and snook. I only really fish for snook at night, um, and I haven't. I haven't even really went snook fishing in a long time. Um, but I'm from like an area that is notorious for one of the best areas for snook fishing in oh, Jupiter. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very like heavy populated area. And so I always grew up doing snook fishing at night. You think even when I was with my dad, like we would, I don't know why I don't, you don't, I never go snook fishing during the day. Like, I really don't have a whole lot of memories of snook fishing during the day. I've heard so many good things, like just through research that I've done and podcasts I've listened to and videos of the snook fishing at night and how good it is. <laughs> Yeah. When, when you were snook fishing at night as a kid, were you mostly bait fishing or were you still fishing artificials and whatnot at night as well? I, all artificial. All yeah. artificial? Cool. 
all artificial. I actually, like you said, I actually like don't know how to use live bait. Yeah, it can be like tricky. It, it kind of like terrifies me on some level. I don't know what, I don't know how to do anything. Like I'm like, what do you do? Does you just cast it out there? Like what do you do with it? <laughs> it's, it, uh, it can be intimidating. When in doubt, put it on a float. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot share my new method. <laughs> I've gotten really good at fishing bait lately yeah. and gotten kind of worse at fishing artificials and fly. Yeah, I know. I've gotten good at convincing my fly clients to throw bait, which is that in itself. Is, that's, I mean, that's, that's an accomplishment talent. for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is a big accomplishment. Yeah, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, and you've turned me on to it too because, like, there's just been times where fish won't eat anything, and you're like, man, I really wish I had some live bait. Yeah, but sight fishing with live bait, split shot in a circle still, hook. Still just as fun. Yeah, it's still super fun. It's actually more fun to watch a little bait fish freak mm-hmm. out for his life. And then another fish come over and eat it. Bad story. It, it's sad, but I mean, it's, you know, you, you just... Oh, you mother know, nature. Gonna, mother nature. That's what I say every time I cast. Here you go, mother nature. But, uh, all right, so what, let, um, tell us what your biggest snook is. If you grew up in Jupiter, you got to have a pretty good gosh. snook. My biggest snook was tarpon fishing at night, actually, in like, um, like uh, where was I? Um, it was like Tampa area, probably. Okay. South of there. It's a large area, but... Over there. Um, I don't know how big it was. Um, I wish I would have known. Stop me when I'm, when I'm there. Here, let me flip the camera over. Oh, jeez. I, I don't know. <laughs> no. Nope. There you go. No, I'm just kidding. It was, it was. Oh, huge. Six <laughs> feet long. Oh, man. For those of you listening, I was just, ex- just I further and further with my hands. I never keep track of the size of fish. It's like the one thing I'm horrible at. I don't um, know what the weights are. I don't know how long they were. I just get so excited and I'm just like, sweet. That's awesome. a great way to be. That's exactly how I am. Yeah, that's a, that Cameron's the same way. I'm really bad about weighing and measuring so bad. fish. I'm so bad. I think I'm like, hey, you guys won't believe it. I caught it. This is definitely a citation. How big was it? I don't know, but it was a citation. <laughs> I know. It was when I was tournament fishing, it would be different because I was practicing and I would like I was always measuring everything, but I never was even I never caught a snook. I don't think in a tournament. So. Yeah. Do you think you'll uh, you think you'll start doing some more kayak tournaments again if you get another kayak? You'll... I don't. I don't know. I I'm not sure. I think I would. I think honestly, I'd prefer to go in the direction of running my own tournament. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be, that'd be cool. super fun. We've talked that's about doing some of those through through this and local tournaments. Yeah, um, through Eastern like, Current. I like to fish them, but I don't. I don't know if I do kayak ones again. I think maybe I might do try to do some more like inshore boat ones. I'm telling you, you need to, if you're going to start something, you need to do nighttime kayak goggle eye tournament. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> She'd win all of them. You'd crush. Yeah. yeah. Huge entry <laughs> fee, and you just crush everybody. Like, yeah. oh, I do have like this hidden talent with goggle eye. I know we're joking, but I'm like, I kind of have like the little hidden talent with it. <laughs> My favorite thing, and I've only done it twice, sail, uh, sail, sail fishing out of Almorada is fun, but catching the ballyhoo. Yes. is way more fun than sail fishing. Yeah. Like, like setting up over the reef, putting some chum out and like little tiny gold hooks with a piece of squid and like catching ballyhoo oh, one at a time fun. is super fun. Sail fishing can be really fun. I feel the same way about like go- like catching goggle eye. Like yeah. I know guys are like, oh, I gotta go catch goggle eye tonight. I'm like, can I come? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's all about perspective. Like you were just saying, like not knowing, not caring about the size fish you're catching or like, you know, it's this is it's a big it's a big snook. Who cares if it's thirty inches or twenty five inches or forty yeah. inches? You know, unless yeah. you're really it's fun into to just catch like fish and getting citations yeah. and the placard and everything. Then you know, <laughs> I don't really see the well that with speckled trout. That's how I'm starting to be. Is like uh, I yeah. want a citation. Oh, yeah, this year I was one of the was the year for me where I'm like, okay, I need to get serious. <laughs> I'm measuring these. Things. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We've talked about that a lot on this podcast, like our love and growth of loving, growth of loving, that doesn't make any sense, but our love of speckled trout, like used to, I didn't give a rip about speckled trout, yeah. um, but like to catch a big redfish, like a you know 30 pound redfish, it's really not that tough. I mean, you just go to an area where 30 pound redfish are and put yeah. bait down and they're going to eat, you know, like a, you could make a hundred thousand casts past a 30 inch trout with a hundred thousand different baits, you know, and if it's not the right day with the right weather pattern and the exact right angle, like he's not going to eat it. Mm-mm. And so that's like my bucket list is a big 
I, between 28 and 30 inch trout, I need to break that 28 inch mark. So. I have I have caught a few of those. Have you? All right, let's talk all about that. We, we, I don't even know why I've talked about anything else. <laughs> and you know what's funny is they were kind of always, not always by accident, but when Mosquito Lagoon was like oh, yeah. really, really, fishing there was really, really good. It was almost like, oh, the other's going to be a trout over here. I already know it. Or I could just, I just, you knew where their little pockets were that they were going to live in. Yeah. Definitely. So what is your uh, best trout? You're, you might not know for sure, but your idea. I actually, I actually don't know for sure, but I have, I do know there, I do know it's over 30. I think really? it's 32 to be honest, because I was measuring these fish at the time because I was tournament fishing and I did have a, I was kayak fishing and I was, did have sticks with me at the time. That's awesome. Yeah. The only thing I'm now is the trail. Holy cow. <laughs> How big is the 10 pound one that's still in the freezer at Intercoastal Angler? That one, like uh, how uh, he's, I think he's 29 inches. 29 inches, 10 pounds. Maybe he's 30 or inches. Like nine Ryan, if you're watching, let me know. Or anyone that knows how long Ryan's trout is, shoot it in the comments. But 32 inch trout. I love this trout. I yeah, shoot it over. We'll share it on the page. I would have been excited about it and I would have taken a picture of it. And you better be freaking excited about a 32 inch trout. <laughs> Well, it could be, it might be 30, it might be 31, it might be 32. I'm pretty sure it's in that, it's in that range. I know 32. it was in that range because I yeah. remember thinking to myself like that it, I can see why so many people would get after them. I just, I don't, I stopped fishing for trout because they're so, I feel like when I would catch them that big, they would just like, they don't live. They, like they were living, but it was a lot of work to get them to live. Definitely. I, I think too, in that warm water, like in Texas and Mosquito yeah. Lagoon, or not Texas, but in Mosquito well, Lagoon. Yeah. Um, I've heard that too. It's it, it's tough for those fish in the summertime. To keep them alive. Months, after to keep alive. Yeah. yeah, it's very tough. They're so frail. Like, yeah. they're so frail. I don't know. I don't know why they're like that. Do you know why they're it's like It's got to be the water temperature. I think it's a water temp thing. It's, you know, they're they're just a little more fragile than other fish. I don't know a ton about, about trout, but, I mean, um, they're definitely hardier here when the water's colder. Yeah. Not cold, yeah. but a little cooler in that like upper 60s mm -hmm. um, is, is like prime, prime time for trout. Yeah. yeah, like right now is prime time for spring trout fishing and, um, and vice versa. All right, so if you had, you know, a, a open day to go do anything fishing-wise, I already know the answer, I feel like, to this. but I was like, you probably know the answer. Triple tail, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> That's all. I just want to get better at it. Yeah. I want to just... Cause I know that there's, I know there's some big fish that go in there and it's just like, I want to put in my time and I want to be able to catch that big one. And unless I'm out there, every chance I get, I'm going to miss it. Like you said, like, Hey, are the triple tail good? Well, you should have called me last week, but I haven't seen them. Cause that's, that is truly that's like the pattern be. I see yeah. with them. Yeah. I'll go weeks without seeing one then weeks of seeing a million. Of, you know, I, don't, I don't know. It's crazy. Maybe pay attention to, to rainfall too. Like I've heard that's a big thing up here for the triple tail being inshore. Mm -hmm is like salinity level they really need high salinity hmm. okay. so if there's been a bunch of rain i could be wrong about this but this is just what yeah. i've heard um, these are the little things that are really important they sound sometimes they sound a little crazy but they're really important yeah yeah you i think? think do you keep a, a lock do you write down everything that that you catch or see see i don't either but cameron is really really good at that and he's learned and been able to go back and i'll yeah. call cameron and be like hey when were these fish moving to this area and he'll be like <laughs> have it in his notes and, and it's, it's I usually, huge like, i try to take photos of stuff like that and yeah. then i can look back that's the only way i can that's the only that's but that's hardly even a record that's just time and date yeah <laughs> definitely it, but that still helps a lot in being able to look back at that and there's apps that do it but i'm a huge conspiracy theorist and like oh, i believe that they're just stealing all our spots oh, all our information yeah 100 <laughs> percent. that's what i would do yeah for we sure had, um or one thing one thing that i've noticed uh, I started recording um, weather patterns yeah. in my fishing log, like if it had been raining a bunch and blah, blah, blah. And the times that it had been raining a bunch, fish will move yeah. to a different location. Yeah, that's huge. What did you see that with the most? The redfish or with trout and red flounder fish. too? Redfish. Redfish? That's yeah. crazy. That's, see, that stuff you just don't put together until you start writing down all the little pieces yeah. of the puzzle. Which is yeah, like after we had Florence, yeah, and it rained like crazy. There was all the redfish in one spot moved way out. Really? Yeah. Wasn't it, wasn't the fishing on the jetty really good right after Florence? Yeah, that's what I was. Oh, that's what you're referring to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I mean, yeah, we'll just dive into it now. 
there was decently good fishing in one spot. Okay. Uh, like kind of flats. And after Florence, no fish there. And people were just absolutely crushing Slot, slot redfish at the jet. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Um, I've heard the same thing with the flounder too. Flounder and the trout. If you get heavy rains, they'll push out and sit on the, the near shore racks, ARs, yeah. and the, the jetty and whatnot. But, but yeah, that's one thing. That, and the crabber too. Crabber, we'll call him Crabber okay. Mike. I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, is Crab- That's what he always says. Like a lot of rain and they're out. They're not on the pots anymore. Mm-hmm. So. Is Cra- there, is there, a lot of fun. Yeah. Is there any um, fish that you uh, now are able to fish for now that you have a boat that you were not able to fish for when you had a kayak or, or, or a fish that you were interested in um, or maybe not so interested in when you had a kayak, but are now more interested in now that you have a boat. No, (laughs) she got it all. (laughs) Those same, I fish for the same fish in the same areas. Um, uh, Yeah. I fish all the same. Yeah. If anything, I fish for less things because I can't, I have my boat can't take me sail fishing or yeah. um, mm-hmm. certain things like that. Yeah. Did you catch more fish when you were on a kayak than you do now on a boat? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I'm getting yeah. a freaking kayak tomorrow. I don't care if we're in a recession. I'm buying a kayak. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to, the best part too about the kayak, especially somewhere like Mosquito Lagoon, I could pull and fish. I'm not as talented as Hansen yet, <laughs> but I could always be fishing and always be doing something. Like I felt like I had more opportunities. There's less like missed opportunity in the kayak. Yeah, definitely. Especially pedal drive. Like you can work your way down a bank. You can hold yourself still while you're casting. You can back up while yeah. you're casting. Yes. You Even more so than a trolling motor. You, do, you, you, you really did. You could be fishing the entire time. Yeah. You could be fishing the whole time. From the second you get in the water, there's no navigation you have to really be doing. Just fishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. I think that's huge. The guy we're bringing on, um, I'm doing a weekend warrior, just a, not a live show like this, but a podcast with another guy who I was talking about that. Just the, the amount of time that you get to spend fishing and, and the amount of uh, um, areas that you can cover. That, well, I mean, the same thing we've been talking about. But the kayak fishing, like every time I talk with someone who kayak fishes or is yeah. passionate about kayak fishing, I'm like, I think I'm missing out. I really need to get a kayak, but I know it would just sit in my backyard 90% of the time. It's uh, a commitment. It is a commitment. I think that what really intrigues me about it is the accessibility to areas that I couldn't access mm-hmm. without a kayak. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, even going and like dragging it into different ponds and dragging, dragging it into, you know, sections of, of water that there's no ramp nearby and, and stuff like that. So I think it would sit a little bit, but you'd eventually use it once. And then you'd use it again and then yeah. you use it again. And then you're like, Ooh, cause then you'll start to dial in like your style of fishing and you'll start to tweak it into the kayak. And then you're going to get excited cause it's like this new style. Yeah, of fishing. that's true. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll, it'll, it won't, you'll always go in the boat. Cause I would, even if I had a kayak, I'd still want to be in the boat more, Yeah. but there will be days where you're like, Ooh, fishing's kind of been tough. Like I might just dial back with in the kayak. Yeah. Take it a little easier today. I think, yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, I see that for me. Like I used to always just pull. I had a trolling yeah. motor, but I would almost always just pull. And then starting to use the trolling motor in different scenarios, like almost opened up this whole new mm-hmm. way to fish. And I'm still sight fishing, but like, you know, and, and a lot of times now I'll pull with a trolling motor down. I'll pull and like be able to hold myself in a spot. Yeah. And, That'd um, be nice. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> what else? Uh, and, but now I'm looking at people like Cameron over here. He's got a, power pole it's like there's always another you know fifteen hundred dollar <laughs> accessory that makes life easier but. oh my yeah. gosh that I thing's a, a lifesaver sometimes it's a lifesaver i had a power pole on my kayak yeah they are legit All right, i don't here, know how to fish without them here's a good question um from hansen christina oh, have no. you ever had any too close to comfort interactions with large oh. marine mammals out on a kayak i was waiting for this <laughs> <laughs> let's hear it i have I have a video on YouTube, actually, where a manatee tried to kill me in my kayak. Oh my. <laughs> I've heard they're vicious. Is that why Hansen <laughs> hates <laughs> manatees? I guess so. You guys, if the world comes to an end, Hansen and I are eating steaks. <laughs> gray, gray, gray animal steaks. Yeah, for yeah. real. I bet they're delicious. Ugh. Once you We're get all the fat. Yeah. <laughs> Inside a comorant. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Comrades, <laughs> I don't know if I do. Wait, so what happened? But let's hear the story. We're just beaver getting rid of them. <laughs> So what is uh what's your what's your marine mammal interaction? With manatees. With, with manatees, yeah. Yes, that's it. Oh, They're that's just... it. <laughs> <laughs> just in itself. Did something specific happen? Good story. Yeah, they tried to kill me. They tried to kill you. Did they try to flip your kayak over? <laughs> they do. They do like first of all myths about manatees. Lesson number one: they are fast, very fast. <laughs> so. Whoever started the rumor of like, well, they're slow, gentle creatures, and you have to be careful with them. That was a lie. Um, they do this like dumb. buck. Well, they do this like bucking bronco thing too. If you get too close to them, so if you're in a kayak and you're like nicely paddling around, enjoying your life, and you slide on top of one, they do this thing and just throws you into the air. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, that I is sketchy. Of where this happened to me. I'm going to have to look that up. I'll send it to you. I will say, I have to agree. I mean, I've never seen a manatee swim super fast, but we get manatees up here in the summer sometimes. Not a lot, but like there'll be a couple of summer that show up. And I'm like, they didn't get up here by freaking drifting around like they do in all the no wake zones down there in Florida. <laughs> they're, they're having to use their tail. And you know what? We have, it's like, like a place like Mosquito Lagoon seems to have like a million of them. And they have, we have these pull and troll zones. Yeah. And, and so we were forced to stay in these little channels and run through all these. And all of the manatees live in the channel. Yeah. You have an entire area <laughs> to live in. And they go right to the channel. Want to hang out on the channel. It's the weirdest thing. That's probably why they got the nickname Speed Bumps. <laughs> yes, they are Speed Bumps. They are. I don't, you feel, I don't feel bad. <laughs> Poor manatees. I don't feel bad. Poor old manatees. <laughs> Well, we're we're right at an hour here. Is there anything from you know someone a kayak angler or uh, you know someone who's just got a boat? Any encouragement yes. um, that you'd like to leave anybody with? Yes, I like everyone to. It's nice to learn from other people how they fish, but at the end of the day, I think it's really really important to stay true to what feels right to you and what your style of fishing is. Yeah. Um, because you just, it's a collaboration of things, but really at the end of the day, like sometimes like I don't catch fish, but I'm really happy with that because I'm sticking to my methods and what feels right to me and what makes me happy. If throwing a shrimp, a DOA shrimp all day long, even though that's not, that's not what they want, or maybe that's not productive that day, I don't care. I like doing it and that's really just what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, I think that's important for people to remember is that. You don't need to like go out there and stress yourself out over these crazy things. You, it's challenging because it takes so long to learn fishing and it's a sport that's constantly evolving and constantly changing. So you're constantly trying to keep up with it. Um, so if you do just go out there and you are just looking and watching, that's, that's learning. That's, yeah. learning. that's hunting. That's still very much learning. If you're not even, even if you're not casting, just watch the water because you can watch how these fish are reacting and you might, See how they're feeding and learn something that you didn't because you're so focused on catching fish. Yeah, that's so true. I think, you know, you can get so beat up by those days that are tough or maybe you get skunked. You come home with no fish, but Ugh, I, those are you, tough. they're tough days. But when you can turn it like you're saying and look at it as, a, as an opportunity to learn from why you didn't catch fish or, um, you yeah. know, what, what, what you could have changed. I think they're all productive days when you look at it like that. Yeah, um, it, it is. You're always learning something. Definitely. If you really break it down. And it, it, I get my butt handed to me every now and then. Like Mosquito Lagoon will kick my butt and I get really upset about it. And I have to remind myself like it's you're learning every single day when you're out there. You're learning something. And I get to make an adjustment next time. Yeah. Yeah. I will say though, if you're ever on the boat with me and we're having a tough day, never say – Oh, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. I hate that so much. <laughs> it's uh, I, I'm okay without catching fish, but I, I, I that saying I've heard it way too many times. <laughs> so um, it's it's a it's a frustrating one when it's when it's slow. But no, I, I'm with you. Just learn from everything um, and and try to yeah. become a more productive angler and 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 do what you're comfortable with and then do what you're not comfortable with you know you know try some new stuff and but but at the end of the day you're on the water you're having fun especially like you know we're in the crazy times now um 
in this country and, and the ability to get out in the water and to be away from everybody else and to be away from the freaking coronavirus and um, enjoying, yeah. you know, nature and, and whatnot is, is a huge blessing and a huge benefit to the places that we live along the coast. So, yeah. um, you know, it's not all about catching fish. Uh, it's about just getting out there and enjoying, enjoying your time in the water. So that's right. It's my little yeah. spiel. Well, thank, yeah. thank you so much for, for coming on. We'll have to do another one um, sure. sometime. It's it's always nice. I always get nervous. Like, well, I, I only interviewed one other girl, but I'm like, crap, I, I, I'm only good at talking to my wife. Like, we're not going to – this podcast is interesting. <laughs> and uh, it's – it's no, it was, it was super easy and super fun. So I, I, I thank you for that and thank you for the knowledge. And um, I just want to encourage other – you know, and as, as or let you encourage other lady anglers to, to join the sport because I feel like it's it's on the change. I feel like there's a lot more girls starting to fish. Um, yeah, but really, just just go, just like just go, just yeah. whatever with what you have, how you can, just start going because you'll get a boat eventually, or get a kayak eventually, or you'll vice versa. Yeah, it's it's hard. I get that it can be very intimidating. Um, I've been doing it my entire life and some days it could be feel intimidating to me yeah um, i could see that if i was to try to learn something new i don't even know where it's it's tough so just just go as much as you can yeah awesome so yeah. if people want to find you um we got your Instagram what's your address name there i'm just kidding red fish <laughs> if you want to find you red <laughs> fish red fish and then what, what do they search on youtube to find some of your videos, just your name? Uh, yeah, probably. I'm not really active on YouTube, but yeah, you probably just search Christina Weber fishing and you'll probably find me. Well, right, if you want to the, see Christina get mauled by a uh, manatee. A man yeah, how do we find that That's one? where you find it. <laughs> Actually, it's like, it, it. yes, you can find that one there. It has like 15,000 views or something. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Viral. I'll, I'll and send it to you. Sweet. <laughs> We're excited to see it. Well, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on here and do the closing real quick. Guys, thanks for tuning in um, to tonight's episode. Like I was saying earlier, if you wanted want to get some some uh, free gear, some free swag, some free fishing rods, I'm gonna be giving away more fishing rods and tackle, um, as well as some exclusive Patreon content. Go join our Patreon for five or ten dollars a month. You choose. Um, you know, if you give us ten dollars a month, we will like you more. Or five hundred. Or <laughs> I'm just kidding. That works. No, too. it's uh, it's uh, um, that's my last plug for the night of Patreon. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in tonight's episode. Again, sorry that it dropped us out um, while we were live, but I will fix that for the podcast recording and the YouTube video recording. Um, Cameron, are you gonna try to fish all this week? I hope so. Work's got me locked in my house. Locked in but your house. With the I don't know, a little bit more sun, away, a little sun, bit more sunlight. When you're done working, when you're done working, <laughs> a little bit more sunlight after uh, working hours has been nice. Yeah, and that, that's the nice thing. You always get to fish in the evenings. Yeah. And top waters, you know, top water fishing starting to happen in the evenings. Yeah. Oh, man. it was good um, this past weekend. Right on. Well, can you think of anything super cheesy to close the show out with? Um, watch the Lion King. Oh yeah, no, Lion, Lion King. King. Lion King's good too, but that's for kids. <laughs> um, everyone, go check out Tiger King later. <laughs>